Welcome. This is the bird I'm going to be stitching today from start to finish. He's a warbler. In particular, what I'm going to talk about today is colors and floss. I'm going to be stitching and discussing my thought process as well as talking in general about choosing colors and what to do with floss. This is a stitched piece that I've just begun working on. I've created a collage with small pieces of fabric and I've basted everything in place. And if you want to see how I do that, I'm going to link to some other videos. But what I want to talk about today is floss. I've just started choosing the colors I want to use in this stitched piece. And it had me thinking about floss, how I organize it, how I choose colors, what colors are important to me. And I had a few things that I wanted to share. So let's talk about floss. I think having a few shades of every color is a really good place to start. And some shades are going to be ones that you use more than others. And so having even more than one set of that color is a good idea. For example, here I have three shades of green. Um, and I think this is a good selection of greens. But I also have dark, medium, and light in several other greens because I use green a lot. And I also use turquoise a lot. So I have a few shades of turquoise too. So this selection is, is a really nice sort of basic one. But if you know for sure that there's colors that you use more, then I would say get more uh, families of dark, medium, and light in those. And, you know, there's so many different shades, for example, of purple. Some purple has more blue in it. Some purple has more red in it. And the same with pink. And there's, there's so many shades of pink. So this is a good start. And again, there's only three browns in this. And for people that work in earth tones a lot, that's nowhere near enough. So it really just depends on what you like to stitch, what colors you like. And again, this is a good place to start and then expand from there, given uh, what the colors are that you like to use. I tend to use lots of bright colors. So I've got lots of bright reds and oranges here. And I have a smaller collection of browns. And it works for me. But what I would say is start with something similar to this. You may choose completely different blues than me, for example. But start with 24 or 30 colors and then work from there and expand from there, depending on what your color palette preferences are. If you're looking to start a floss collection for yourself or for someone else, I've created a free downloadable guide with suggestions of my 30 top colors in a rainbow of hues. Details on how to get access to it will be mentioned later in this video, so keep watching. So here's my floss collection. I have, as you can see, many, many, many types of green that I've kind of grouped together. I don't have as many browns. And then I've got blues ranging from very sort of purpley blues. I, I've got, you know, turquoisey blues, greeny blues. And those are the colors that work for me. So I, I tend to really go for turquoise and greens and, and blues a lot more than other colors. And then, you know, tending this way, these are sort of almost yellow greens. And there's some yellowy greens here. And so I'll show you my other tray. And as you can see, I have a pretty good collection of yellows. So, you know, with really light yellow, lemon yellow, and you know, golden yellows, and then there's the yellows that have the browns in them, and yellows that have more orange. A smaller selection of sort of true oranges, and then a lot of these different shades that, you know, they're sort of described as like coppery shades, coral, salmon shades, so this is starting to go into the pink. So here's pinks, you know, there's raspberry and rose, and there's melon colors, so those are have a bit more orange, and then there's the terracotta colors, which I really like which again, they're kind of in that copper family. And then a small selection of reds and sort of garnets, and then going into these other types of pinks that don't have as much sort of orangey shades in them. 
so the fuchsias and the plums and the cranberries and then going into these sort of blue purples and these sort of antique purples here that almost you know have almost sort of a brownie look to them more of you know these ones i think are called grape and antique colors and then here's grays and there's everything from sort of greeny blue grays there's brown grays and then my lightest light colors which include ones that have pink and yellow you know from white and the ecru which is sort of a brownie a very very light off-white color so this collection to me is huge and it's not as big as some it's a lot bigger than others and it's just grown over time i've added you know, as my style has developed and I know which colors I like, I've added and added. So, you know, it really is sort of an endless process, but the 30 that I've suggested, and please feel free to download the short little PDF that I've written with my suggestions if you're interested in them. There, there'll be a link to that um, just to get you started. This is the beginning stages of my new stitched piece. I've created the collage and I've basted all the pieces down. If you, now I'm just choosing floss and I'm looking at the piece and I'm trying to decide what colors I want to pull out of the piece. I definitely am thinking about using turquoise blue. I want it to be a lighter color than this blue and I want to bring out the turquoise shades here. So I've chosen these colors that are kind of an in-between point, in between sort of more green shades in this and the dark dark blues. These are three shades of turquoise that I'm going to start working on to try and bring those colors together. I've only chosen one color so far of yellow. It's sort of a straw color and it's close to the color that's up here and it's going to hopefully tie in this brighter, bolder yellow color to this. I've chosen a terracotta color which is here. This is a little bit more pink and I'm hoping that it will tie together this color here of this fabric with these colors here. And in this yellow pattern fabric with the flowers there is some green so I picked a green that is close to it that I also feel goes with the blues and I've picked a purple because there is purple in there. I'm not sure if I'm going to use it or not. It's kind of a bit of a random color throw in that I want to have in front of me. I'm not sure in the end what I will do. So I'm going to start trying to unify all of the colors and enhancing their differences at the same time by this color palette. So my threads seem pretty organized and I think they are. But what about extras? These are all extra flosses that I have bought as backups. What happens is I go to the store and I have a list of things I need, but then I see another color that I like and I can't remember if I have it or not. I'm not sure. So I buy it. So I end up with all of these, which eventually I will use, but these are all extras. And I found a way to keep track of what I have and what I don't have, and it can go to the store with me. If you use a cell phone or an iPad or a tablet of some sort, there's an app called Thready that I have found. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I just really find it helpful. And so what it is, is it's a way to organize your floss. It's got all the DMC thread numbers and names, and you can add the ones that you have. So you can make a list of all the ones you have and you can also make a list of ones that you need and so the way that you find the color is you can either scroll through or you can type in the top the number if you know the number that you want and it'll bring up some selections and then if you choose a color you can just go through and add how many do you have and you add it or it's maybe it's a color that you don't have so then you can say that you need one and you can take this list with you to the store. The other way that I use it that I find is helpful when I'm stitching and I notice that one of my floss colors is getting low. And so I can just open up my phone and I can type in the number and it will show me how many I have 
And if it's more than one, then I know that I have one in reserve. And if I don't, then I can add it to my need list. And then I know that I need to get that next time I'm getting floss. So I find it really, really a helpful companion in keeping organized and knowing what I have and don't have. The other thing that's really nice about it is that you can scroll through and you can look at other colors that you may not have that may be really good companions. Say you have a, a dark and a light and you're wondering if there's a medium tone that would go. And you can scroll through and you can select new colors that way. And then you can take that with you just to the store. And then you can decide if you do want that color or not. So I just find it's really helpful. And if you do use apps on your phone or your iPad or tablet, this might be something that you find helpful. I bought this in the app store and it was a couple of dollars. I live in Canada, so the price that I paid may be different depending on where you live. But for me, I think I paid about $3 Canadian, which is well worth it. And there's no ads. There's nothing else that pops up while you're using it. It's just your own way of keeping track of your floss. So I've begun stitching on this bird. I've added some stitching around some of the edges of the patches of fabric. And I've done a bit of black stitching around the edges. And what I've decided with this bird is that I want to make it into a warbler. And there's a type of warbler that comes occasionally around where I live, and it's called a black-throated gray warbler. So, I so here's a couple of pictures of this cute little warbler. These pictures are from Wikipedia, and I've provided the link to the original photographer. So I've cut out a piece of gray fabric to try and mimic the sort of gray wing that this bird has. And he has a black head with some white stripes and a little dot of yellow on his head. So I thought that would go really well with both the shape that he is and also the colors that are around it. So talking about color, I've decided to bring in some shades of gray. So I've picked this one gray, which is kind of more a brownie gray. Some of the feathers, especially down in this lower area, have that sort of brownie gray tone with white. And the upper part is kind of a medium gray. And I thought I would probably blend these two colors. I feel like this color may be a little too dark, and so maybe blending in one that's a little lighter might work. I'm gonna see how I feel about that. So those are three colors that I've added to the original grouping of colors. And I'm just gonna stitch down his wing and see where I go with the color. So again, talking about the 30 colors, that you may want to have in your stash, for me, having multiple shades of gray is really important and helpful in the kind of stitching that I do. So I've done a bit more stitching. I've attached this gray part and started the stitching on the wing and I've stitched his head, his eye, and this white part on his face. So I feel like his head's looking really nice. I'm just going to continue and do some stitching on the rest of his body. I also may hop around and do some stitching in other spots just to keep everything sort of even in terms of the stitching that's happening so there isn't too much pulling in going on. Before I leave the bird and move on to stitching around, I'm going to add the yellow that he has on his head. It's kind of in between where his eye is and where the beak is. And so I'm using this same yellow. So far, it's the only yellow that I've chosen. And I may want to pick other shades as I move along. But this is my main yellow shade that I think will blend the different yellows that are in this up here and this yellow and this more golden color down here. So that's the yellow I want to use on this warbler. That's looking cute. I think I'm going to leave it at that. I don't want to make it too, too big. Uh, some pictures you see that yellow spot is quite big. In other ones, it's smaller. So I'm going to leave it there and move on to other stitching. And I'll be able to decide later if I want that to be more prominent. But for now, he's looking nice and sweet. 
this is my bird so far. And what I ended up using were two shades of gray and black and white. So I used this darker gray and I've used this medium gray. I had also brought in this lighter gray which was very close to the color of the gray piece of fabric. So I didn't end up using it, I just used the colors in the gray fabric showing through these two colors. So I did cut a little piece of the gray fabric out and stitched black on top. And I've put the lighter gray under here and the darker gray on top and I've mixed them here. So I think this bird's looking good at this point. I may or may not add a few more stitches in white, but I'm pretty happy with where I'm at with the bird. I think, I think um, I'm gonna put some ground underneath him and I'm gonna add more stitching around. And in terms of color for the background, what I have done is I've brought in some of this green and when you look at it on its own, it certainly doesn't look like any of the colors in here. The closest is the green in these flowers. But actually, once I started to stitch, it really started to blend with the color of this fabric. So I moved it up here. I started stitching in here. So I'm going to add more of this green. And I think I'm also gonna bring back some of this terracotta color. I've used the darker gray color to add a little bit of ground underneath the bird. And I have added some yellow and some of that terracotta color. I've also added one more round of blanket stitch in black. So now what I'm thinking about is whether or not I wanna add more of this dark gray color in other places. And I still have plans to add in more of this green color. Instead of adding gray, I brought in this dark turquoise color and I've added it in a few spots, just made some marks, and I've started to wrap it around the edges in a few spots. I also brought in that green. I started to add some along the edges and I just added a few stitches around here and there. I also started adding more of this yellow in the bottom area of the piece and I'm gonna continue with that moving that up to the top. Also going to come back with this terracotta color and I'm going to bring that into, I think the bottom here and some other spots around the piece. I've added some more different stitches in different places and I'm coming to a point where I'm getting low on this one terracotta color. So I know this is going to be gone soon and so I'm wondering do I have one of these in my stash? So all I have to do is pull up my app and I just type in the number. In this case, it's 3778. And then my app will tell me that I have two. And so for me, what that means is that I have one on the bobbin and I have one in reserve. So I know that I have one in my stash. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change have from two to one. So I know I just have one on the bobbin and I don't have one in reserve. The other thing I could do is if I know this is a color I'm going to be using a lot is I could decide that I actually want to have one in reserve and I need another one. So then I go on to the need side and I say that I need one and that'll be there for a record for me for next time that I go into the store. So now I've gone into my stash and I've pulled out the one I have in reserve and now I can just wind it on to this thread. I can wind off what I have and I can use it to keep stitching and load up the new one. So what I do is I just open up the floss so that it's a round circle and I put that around my wrist and I just use my wrist to keep everything from being tangled as I wind on the new color. And it's really that simple. And I just release some from my wrist as I need more. And that's it. 
So if you'd like a copy of my 30 essentials embroidery floss list, there'll be a link in the description. And what that does is takes you to my website. And if you subscribe to my newsletter, then you get sent the link to the PDF download. So that's how you do it. So click below, click through, sign up, and you'll get it. So I've taken my terracotta and I've added more layers. Just in the background, you can't see it a lot. It's really added texture and unified the color more than anything. I finished all the edging, so there's a multicolored edging. I've added some French knots, subtle, and I've added some up and down slow stitching lines in the green color. And behind that, there is slow stitching lines going the other way in the terracotta color. So the blending of all these colors has really unified everything in a way, and yet it's let the patchwork kind of shine and come out. And it's a wonderful backdrop for this black and white and gray bird. So I'm really happy with where it's at. And I'm feeling like it's done. One of the other things about floss are the little ends that you end up with. Here's a handful of the ends from the last few hours of stitching. You may have heard of the term ort. These are my orts. And I've been keeping them in a jar for about four months now. So here's my ort jar and it's getting pretty full. So at the end of a project, or even midway through if I have a lot, I can just throw my extra threads in here. And this jar is quite full. I could push it down and add more. It really is a fun, nice thing to look at. There's lots of different things that people do with them. They use them for stuffing, if they make stuffed animals or art dolls. Some people will sort them by color and divide them up into smaller jars. Some of the pieces are very small so they can't be used for basting and some of them are longer. It could be used for basting. When I learned the word orts and learned about the concept of them I decided to create my own ort jar and save them. What will I do with them? I haven't decided. I don't feel like I need to decide. They're just a beautiful thing to look at. They're a reminder of all the stitching work that I've done. Now when it comes to color, let's have a look at what I initially had intended. So I had my black and white and I pulled out all these blues and this purple and green and a terracotta and a yellow. So I ended up not using the purple at all and I ended up using the lightest and the darkest turquoise. So I didn't use these three. And then what did I bring in? Well I brought in three shades of gray and I didn't end up using this lightest shade. And at the very end I brought in a darker yellow color. It's kind of just a little bit darker than the yellow that I'd been using. And I used the darker color on the edges and in some of the stitching and for the French knots. So these are the colors that I used and these are the colors that I didn't use. I'm glad I had these colors because they gave me something to think about and choices to grab from. And I gave myself the freedom to bring in some extra colors. In mind. Let's start at the beginning with a selection that you think will work and then go from there. I feel like this black throated gray warbler is finished. What I really like about the way this piece turned out is how the background reminds me of a patchwork quilt. We'll have a look at him from this perspective. I think he's really cute. I think it's a celebration of both, of both a bird and patchwork. And the thing about patchwork quilts is they're a joyous celebration of color. We've talked so much about color and floss 
And I think that this little warbler has been the ideal subject to talk about color and to talk about floss while he was stitched. I'm going to show some close-up shots so you can see the stitching and the texture in this piece. And it really highlights what a fun, colorful project it was. Thank you so much for joining me. See you next time. Goodbye.